Before the video starts, I want to share the conclusion in case you don't want to spend time watching the entire video, though I'd greatly appreciate it if you do. Does FSR4 work on the Radeon 780M integrated GPU? The answer is yes, and I'm going to show you how to get it running. Does it perform well enough though? That's a question only you can answer. Linux users love their AMD GPUs. If you ask about choosing a GPU on any Linux related forum, you're likely to get recommendations for AMD cards. Many believe AMD is the best choice for Linux gaming. Nvidia, on the other hand, struggles with poor Linux driver support, at least according to Linux users. As a long time Nvidia user on a Linux desktop, I agree that Nvidia needs to improve their drivers, especially given the significant performance issues that persist. However, AMD isn't perfect either. Most AMD cards work out of the box, with no no performance loss when gaming on Linux. Some even claim minor advantages in FPS when running GPU intensive titles. The big problem with AMD is their lack of support for older products. We all know that FSR4 looks amazing as an upscaler, but it only supports the latest 9000 series cards, which feels like a slap in the face to AMD fans. It's even worse when you compare it to Nvidia, where the outstanding DLSS4 upscaler is available for their RTX 20 series, which was released back in 2000. 2018. That was seven years ago. Meanwhile, an RX 7800 XT, while powerful enough to not need an upscaler right now, is stuck with the inferior looking FSR3 and will likely suffer in the long run. This issue is especially frustrating for those who can't afford recent AMD cards, which remain pricey in my opinion. What about users who need upscalers the most, like those with integrated GPUs or handheld devices? I daily drive a Lenovo laptop with a Radeon 780M integrated GPU, just one generation behind the the latest models. It can run most games at 1080p on low settings with reasonable FPS, but it would benefit greatly from a decent upscaler. Right now, FSR 3 looks terrible for most games, and the only good option is Intel's XESS. Recently, I saw videos showing people getting FSR 4 working with 7000 series cards on Linux, which share the same RDNA 3 architecture as my 780M integrated GPU. This made me wonder if I could get FSR 4 working on my laptop. Today, I decided to give it a try to see if it works, and if so, how much improvement it offers. First, I needed to confirm the requirements for FSR4. Obviously, you need to be on Linux. After some research, I learned that the Mesa driver needs to be on the latest development version to emulate FP8 functionality. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I knew I needed to update Mesa before proceeding. Unfortunately, I'm running Ubuntu on my laptop, while most videos and posts I found used Arch Linux, likely because many gaming-focused distros are Arch-based. I already had a PPA for the latest Mesa drivers installed, but when I checked the version, it was 25.1.5 and I needed 25.2. After a few searches, I was suggested to compile the Mesa driver myself, and after looking at the GitHub page, I was thinking it seemed manageable. Actually, it was a big mistake. I encountered endless dependency issues, and even after resolving them one by one, I still faced errors I couldn't solve. As a result, I wasted hours of my Saturday afternoon. Eventually, I found a PPA for Bleeding Edge Mesa drivers drivers, but I was hesitant to use unstable drivers on my daily machine. Then it hit me. Why not create a DistroBox container with the latest drivers to run Steam exclusively? I had previously used DistroBox for DaVinci Resolve to get my external GPU working properly on Linux, but that's another long story. The beauty of this approach is that I don't even need to run the same distro as my laptop, so I could set up an Arch Linux or Fedora system for the latest driver support. After some research, I chose Fedora as it seemed easy to set up. The whole process was finished within 10 minutes it's and if you are interested, please check the description. I will list all the commands used in this video there. I then opened Steam inside DistroBox and checked the system information. The Mesa version was correct. Perfect. Next, I needed the latest Proton version that supports FSR4. With the help of a tool called Proton Plus, this was straightforward. I restarted the Steam client, selected the Proton version I installed, and was ready to go. The next thing I needed was OptiScaler. Getting OptiScaler working in the game took some effort though. Initially, I placed the files in the wrong folder for Expedition 33, but I eventually figured it out. I also downloaded the fake NV API files to make the game display DLSS options since I was using an AMD GPU. Next, I edited the configuration file to enable FSR4 by default, or at least I believe that's what it does. Then I downloaded the FSR4's DLL file from AMD and placed it next to OptiScaler. Finally, I edited the game's launch options and launched it. I used Expedition 33 as a benchmark since it's the only game I've been playing lately. I tested the beginning of the game because when I first played it, the image quality was poor with significant shimmering, especially in the character's hair, even at 100% rendering with TSR. With FSR4, 
4, the shimmering issue is mostly resolved. The image looks much cleaner overall. There's a slight degradation in sharpness, but I still prefer FSR4's look, even at 1080p on the lowest settings and ultra performance mode, which was essentially rendering at 360p. The image remains decent on my laptop's smaller screen. Without FSR4, the difference in image quality is stark. At 50% rendering resolution, if you look at the TSR images, it just looks so shimmering it's very unpleasant to play this way. Switching to FSR4, the image becomes much more stable, and in my opinion, far more pleasing. Even at 33% rendering resolution, I prefer FSR4's softer look over TSR's pixelated images. With XESS, the story is similar. FSR4's image quality is unmatched. However, the frame rate leaves room for improvement. At 50% rendering, even on the lowest settings, the game barely hits 30 FPS. I also noticed added latency from the upscaler, making gameplay feel quite unplayable. At ultra performance mode of 360p, the frame rate improves to the mid 30s, but it's still not ideal. Another important question is, does FSR 4 provide more FPS compared to native resolution? Fortunately, the answer is yes. At 100% TSR, I was getting only 20 FPS, but with FSR 4 at 50% rendering, I achieved around 30 FPS. Most impressively, even at 50% rendering, the image quality is, in my opinion, better than native resolution. It's less sharp, but far more stable, with significantly less shimmering around the character's hair. In fact, I'd choose FSR 4 over TSR or XESS at any rendering resolution. A few more minor details I need to clarify here. First, the FSR version shown in this video is 4.00, but there's a later version, 4.01. However, according to various posts I've seen on Reddit, the latter performs much worse on Linux. I tested it once to verify this claim, and it's absolutely true. So don't bother trying version 4.01, as any potential quality improvement isn't worth the performance loss. Another thing to note is that OptiScaler doesn't always work perfectly when switching upscalers. I encountered crashes or a black screen when switching to FSR4, but once it switched successfully, the game ran stably. Also, I couldn't get Mango HUD to work. The game wouldn't start with Mango HUD, which is why I used Steam's performance overlay in this video. Lastly, I briefly tested FSR4 on Cyberpunk, and the results were similar, so I didn't record any footage. FSR 4 looked good there, but the difference wasn't as significant as in Expedition 33. So the conclusion is, it is possible to get FSR 4 working with the Radeon 780M integrated GPU. The image quality is significantly better, and it improves both image quality and frame rates compared to native resolution. The biggest issue is the upscaler latency. FSR 4 adds about 10 milliseconds, compared to less than 2 milliseconds for FSR 3, as shown by the OptiScaler overlay. This latency is noticeable during gameplay feeling similar to streaming a game using sunshine and moonlight from my desktop PC to my smartphone, and it becomes more pronounced at lower FPS. At around 30 FPS, it's not a pleasant experience. Still, I'm thrilled with the results. I also learned that AMD is working on bringing FSR4 to RDNA3 GPUs. Hopefully, in the near future, we'll see better performance and reduced latency.